It's always so horrifying when a child murders, especially when they take the lives of family members who loved them. Sometimes it can be for mental health reasons that the parents either didn't know about or didn't realize were as serious as they were. Sometimes they lash out at abusers or, again, family members who didn't take them seriously when they found out that they were being abused, possibly by a family member. Sometimes there doesn't seem to be a reason at all. Either way, it's always just so unfathomable and so jarring when any child commits a crime as brutal as murder. And in this case, we genuinely do not have the answers for why this happened. Everyone who knew the family are just shocked and devastated at what happened here. I will warn you that this case is very difficult to listen to. They have released certain images of the crime scene as well as images of the attack actually taking place. I'm not going to show you any images that I think are extremely graphic, unnecessarily graphic, but even the images I do show, just knowing what occurred before, during, and after these images are taken just makes them so much more disturbing to look at. So that is what I will say about that. Without any further delay, let's get into today's case. This is the story of Irina Garcia and her son, Derek Rosa. As of right now, there's not a lot known about 38-year-old Irina Garcia or her 13-year-old son, Derek Rosa. What we do know is that Derek was born to Irina and his father, Jose Rosa. However, just two weeks before her death, Irina gave birth to a baby girl who is fathered by Derek's stepfather and the family lived together in an apartment in Hialeah, Florida. As far as I have been able to find, we don't know the name of the baby girl. I also haven't seen the stepfather's name listed anywhere. We do hear it in the 911 call, but I can't really make the name out, and I do want to respect his privacy anyways, given the awful, immeasurable tragedy that he's just gone through. By all accounts, it appeared that Irina, her husband, and Derek were all excited for the arrival of their newest addition into the family. Irina and the family can be seen smiling in her maternity photos, cradling her stomach, excited for the baby's arrival. According to one friend, Irina could be described as a beautiful person on the inside and out. She was so warm and kind, and by all accounts, she was a good mother. 13-year-old Derek was in the 8th grade at the iMatter Academy, which is a tuition-free charter school, and there he was known as an honor student. Meanwhile, Derek's stepfather worked as a truck driver, so it appears that he had a schedule that kept him away from the home for extended periods of time. However, by October 12, 2023, at around 11.30 p.m., 911 received a very disturbing call from the residence where Irina, her husband Derek, and their new baby girl lived. In that call, we can hear Derek requesting police to come to his house because he had just stabbed his mom. In the first five-ish minutes of the call, he's explaining that he doesn't know his address, so he looks around for mail so he can tell them their address. He said that it was just him, his mom, and the baby sister in the home because his stepfather was out at work, driving his truck far away that day. He explained that there was a gun in the home in the other room, but he did also have a knife nearby. It's kind of interesting because as he's going through this and looking through the mail, he said that he couldn't actually read the mail, like he couldn't read the address that was listed on there, so the dispatcher just told him to read off the numbers and letters if he could. That was a little bit confusing to me. He obviously could just be in a state of shock and just like isn't processing anything right now. That's totally possible. But I just thought that it was interesting that he said that he couldn't read off the mail to her. He then mentions that he has other family members who can take care of his sister. And after that, he told the dispatcher that he took pictures of his mother and what happened after he stabbed her and sent those pictures to his friends, asking the dispatcher, is that bad? The dispatcher asked him why he killed his mom, but he just avoids those questions. Eight minutes into that 911 call, he does start sounding emotional, saying that he is sad and he's sorry for what he did. When the police arrived, he started asking if they were going to kill him. He actually stayed on the line for a total of 18 minutes until we hear police arrive, but obviously I'm going to edit down the call to make it a little bit more digestible and not quite as long. Excuse me. 
quieren que lo podamos ayudar? It can be just speak English. Uh, I speak English. How can I help you? It's, can you bring uh, the police over here where I live? What is your address? I don't know my address. Are you by yourself with your mom? Yes, yeah, no. My my baby sister's here too. She's sleeping. Did you kill your mom? Okay, where is the knife right now? I put it. Let me check. Wait. I put it on the floor inside of the. Wait, no. Where is it? I can't find the knife. You can find it. Where is your sister? She's in her crib sleeping. I how, cannot see her. How old is your sister? She's only like a week old. Okay, and you did not touch her, correct? No, I did not touch her. I didn't want to touch my sister. Okay, I need you. I need you to go and find me your address, cause I don't know where you are right now. Okay. Okay. I'll It, try to find a mail. Okay, try to find a mail, please. Can you? I'll I'll try. I'll try. I need yeah. to know if your mom is is breathing. She said, "Miss." Okay, and why did you do that? There's blood all over the floor. Okay, why did you kill your mom? My stepdad, he has two guns. He has a Glock 19, and he also has a Beretta something. Is your stepdad? And he has Glock 19 with him. Does your stepdad live there I'm with you? The Beretta, I have the gun with me. I was going to shoot myself, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Okay, is your stepdad there with you? My what? Your stepfather. No, he is he's a truck driver and he's driving trucks far away. And do you have guns in the house? Only one, but he has another one with him. Okay, so you have a where is the gun right now? It's in the living room. I loaded it. I pulled back the slide but I did not shoot. Okay, the gun is locked or it's in the living room somewhere? Yeah, no, I have it right here on the couch. Do do I uh get rid of the bullet? Not shoot it. Pull back the slide. Do not touch anything. Okay, leave everything how you or how it is. I need you to get me the address. Someone's calling my mom. What do I do? D don't pick up. I need you to get me your address. That's what I need. Okay, okay, okay. I'll try to find it. I'll try to find it. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm trying to look for it. Okay, do you think there's something that we can do for your mom? I'm, I'm trying for my mom. Yes. I'm looking through her toys right now. Can't find any papers. I need I need to know that you don't have any guns or any knives with you. I, I there's a knife in my room and there's a gun in the living room. Okay, I need you to stay away from them. Can you put them in a safe place away from where the officers can see them? Can you put them away? So where do I go? Ah! Shit, I'm sorry. I saw some, something fell in the chair. I'm sorry, miss. What happened? Uh, something fell from my mom's room and it scared me. Something, I put the knife in something fell the from what, sir? It was, uh, she has a handbag. I wonder if a handbag fell. Okay, not a problem. I need you to put everything away, okay? I don't have anything in your hands. Okay, but can, can I can have my phone in my hand. You can have your phone in your hand. Yes, you can. I think I might have found, I found this mail. Okay, I'm what does the mail say? I'm trying to find the address. I think I found it. May I have it, please? I, I don't know how to read it, though. That's fine. Just give me numbers. <sighs> Whatever you see. Mail. I, I see Hialeah, Florida, and then it says, what? I need you to stay with me on the line, okay? Do not hang up, okay? Okay, okay. Do I, do I stay in the living room with a gun or no? No, no. Do not touch anything. Do not touch anything. I don't want you to have anything in your hands, okay? Okay, do I drop the, the mail? You can put the mail to the side. Just have your phone with you, okay? Just stay with me on the line. Where is your sister? Your sister still there? She's sleeping. She's sleeping, okay. Yeah. Excuse me, miss. What do I do if, if she wakes up? If you wake up, just let me know. I need to know. Do you okay. think we can help your mom? Miss, she's dead. And my stepdad's calling me. Do I ask her? No, stay with me on the line until the officers get there. Okay, I'm sending you help. Okay. Miss, do I sit in the living room or not? 
Stay in the living room. Stay there where you are. Do not touch anything else. Okay, Miss. Miss. Yes. I have more family members. They can take care of my sister. I understand. I understand. Your sister will be in good hands, okay? Let's okay. just worry about you now, okay? Okay. Miss. Yes. I took pictures and I told my friends about it. Was that bad? You told who about it? My friends. Your friends? Did you send pictures to your friends? So what you did? Yeah. Okay. Do you see the officers? What do you mean? They're already here. Do not go. I see officers. Do I leave? No, do not leave. Do not leave. Stay there where you are in your apartment. I'm going to tell you when you can come out, okay? Do not have anything in your hand. Okay. I'm going to stay in my, in my living room. Stay in your living room. Only have your cell phone, okay? Stay with me on the line. Okay, miss. Miss. I touched a lot of things in the house. Is that bad? Was that bad? That's okay. That's not a problem. Okay? That's not a problem. Just stay with okay. me on the line, okay? Why did you do okay. this to your mom? Can you tell me why? My stepdad's calling my mom. I can hear the phone. Okay, do not pick up the phone. Just stay with me on the line. Concentrate, okay? Stay with me. Do you need fire rescue? Are you hurt? Uh, no, I'm not hurt. I just have a little bit of blood on my hands. And my... You have blood in your hands? Yeah. Miss, how did the police get here so fast? Because this is a life-turning emergency. So we go, we get to places fast. We're there to help you, okay? We're going to help you and your sister, okay? Okay. Who did you send us pictures to? My friend. I don't know his real name because he is an online friend who I play with a lot. I didn't delete the pictures off my phone, but I sent them to him. And I told him that I was sorry, and then I let's go by. I'm okay. I'm okay. really sad. I'm really sad. I understand. We're here to help you, okay? We're going to help you. We're going to help your, your sister, okay? Okay. I know you okay. didn't mean to do none of that, that you did, okay? Okay. We just want to make sure that you're okay. I'm okay. My mom's not okay. She's dead. I understand that. We're going to try to see if we can still try to help her. Okay. You, okay? Okay, miss. Just stay with me on the line. Let me know if your sister wakes up. Okay. I don't see her, so she's probably not awake. Okay. I'm standing here in the living room with the door unlocked. Should okay. I lock the door? No, just leave the door unlocked. Just make sure you don't have anything in your hands. <coughs> ah! They're knocking. You open the door. They're knocking the door? Okay. Do I open? Stay with me on the line. Do not open. Do not open until I tell you to, okay? Okay, tell me when to open this. Okay, I just want to make sure that you have nothing in your hands. I only have my phone, so I put my phone down. Okay, do not put your phone down until I tell you to. I just want to make sure that you have nothing in your hands, no guns, no knives. I don't have a gun and a knife. I put the knife in my room, and then the gun is in the living room. Then so open okay, the door. stay with me on the line. Do not open until I tell you to. Okay, please, they're opening the door. Do not open the door until I tell you to, okay? They're opening it. They're opening it. They're opening the door? They moved the door handle, and they said it was unlocked. That's fine. Do not open until I tell you to open the door. And to make sure that you have nothing but your cell phone in your hand. Miss, are they going to kill me? No, they're not going to kill you. We're here to help you, okay? We're going to help your family, okay? Okay. Miss, they said come outside. Do I come outside? Okay, do not go outside. Stay with me on the line. Okay. Okay, just listen to me. Okay. Stay with me. I'm I'm here. Miss. Yes. My my stepdad is a truck driver. Mm -hmm. so what what is he gonna do when he comes back home? I don't know though. Don't talk to him. Just worry right now about you and about your sister, and let's try to see if we can still help your mom. Okay. You cut her neck. Okay. Where else did you stop her other than that cutting her neck? Okay, listen, I need you to step outside, open the door slowly with your hands up, okay? Yes, okay, okay. Leave the phone, leave, leave the phone on, 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 on speaker. Okay. So put it on the floor? Put the phone on the floor and go outside with your hands up in the air. Okay, miss.
By the time police arrived to the scene, of course, they immediately arrested Derek and they went inside to inspect the scene and what they walked into was just horrific. They went into Irina's room and found her lying splayed out on the floor with over a dozen stab wounds to her neck and chest, with one slashing wound severing an artery in her neck. Upon later autopsy, it turned out that Irina had been stabbed over 46 times. Times. In the bedroom, police found a kitchen knife with a pink or purple handle and a six-inch blade sitting on the dresser, and it was still covered in blood and hair. Also in that room, the two-week-old baby, who was unharmed, was still asleep in her crib. After discovering this grisly scene, police went through Derek's phone, and on that phone, they found even more disturbing things. They found that Derek, just as he told the dispatcher, took photos of his dead mother after he stabbed her, as well as a selfie of himself, allegedly after killing his mother. In the selfie, he's sticking out his tongue and holding up a hang loose sign, and you can see that there is blood all over his hand. He then sent the selfie, as well as two photos of his mother to a friend, only named in his phone as Sweden, with a text message saying goodbye, accompanying those pictures. I don't know if police know the identity of this friend yet, but we do know that his or her name has not been released publicly. After being taken into the police station for questioning pretty much right away, Derek admitted to investigators what he had done. He said that that night, he went to bed at 10 p.m., and so did his mom. But then he woke up, went into the kitchen, grabbed a large-sized knife, and stabbed her. He first started stabbing her while she was asleep, but then she woke up and started screaming. But again, he continued stabbing her until he knew she was dead. He said that his stepdad has two guns that he keeps in the home, but since he's a truck driver, he carries one of them with him at work at all times. But he still had another gun at the home. So, after killing his mother, he went into the closet and found the other gun. He explains that he initially wanted to shoot himself, but after putting in the magazine and pulling up the slide, he decided that he couldn't shoot himself. After that, he said that he called his friend Sweden to tell him what he had done and to say goodbye. Once again, he admitted that he sent those photos of his mom as well as that selfie to Sweden. After hanging up with Sweden, he immediately called 911 to report what had happened. When police asked him why he killed his mother though, he got up to go to the restroom and then he came back and he immediately asked for a lawyer. He was now refusing to answer questions as to why he did what he did and to this day, I still don't think he's told anybody why this happened. Here is a video of that confession. I want to note that there are a few things that are redacted, so if there are parts that are fading out or you can tell that he's talking but there's no sound, that's because those parts are redacted. It's not like an editing error or anything like that. Those parts just haven't been released to the public. What happened uh, tonight? Um, were you, uh, do, do you communicate with people over the phone? Were you talking? Tell me what happened tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Well, at around, like, like, 10, I went to bed. Okay. My mom did too. Is that your regular time? Like, nine? nine? Yeah. Okay. And tonight, who was all there? Me, my mom, and my sister. Okay, so you went to sleep around 10? Yeah. Okay, and then what? I woke up. You killed her? Alright. Um, what type of, what type of knife was it, do you know? It was just a big size kitchen knife. That big? Yeah. What color was the, the, the handle? Purple. Purple? Yes. Okay. Uh, your mom was sleeping? Yes, she was sleeping. Okay. What did you do uh, after you killed her? My stepdad has, I mean, he owns two guns. He has a Glock 19. Okay. And then, uh, I don't know what to call it, another one. So, what did you do with the guns? 
he always has his uh, garage engine with him at mm-hmm. all times. Mm-hmm. And since he's a truck driver, he was at home, he was far away. Okay. So I went into the closet. Mm-hmm. I found uh, his book bag because he goes shooting at gun ranges. Okay. I grabbed the gun. I put the magazine in the gun. Okay. I pulled back the slide, but I wanted, I didn't want to shoot myself. Okay. Uh, I intended to shoot myself before, but I couldn't. Okay. And then what did you do? I decided to call my friends to tell them what happened. And then I said goodbye to my friends. You called them before you decided to try to shoot yourself or afterwards? After. Okay. How many friends did you call? Only one. What's his name? I don't know his real name. He's an online friend. He's an online friend? Yeah. When you say online friend, what do you mean? From video games? Yes, from video games. I know him real well. Okay. How long have you known him? Since like I was 10. Three years. Three years? Three have years. you ever met him? No. I've seen his face. you seen his face? Yeah. So how did you communicate with him? My cell phone. Through your cell phone. So you have his number? Yes. And you don't have him stored under a certain name or you used to have him stored under a gamer tag? I have him. I made up a name for him. You made up a name for him? Yeah. What name did you make up for him? Sweden. Sweden? Sweden. Okay. How often do you talk to Sweden? Every weekend. Every weekend? Yeah. Okay. So you called Sweden. And what did you tell Sweden? I told him what I did. What exactly did you tell Sweden when you say what I did? Did you tell him how? Or no? How you killed her? Or no? Okay. Did you send them any pictures? Yes. Uh, how many pictures did you send them? I sent them two of my mom and one of me. Okay. Um, did you... What did he tell you? He said he couldn't believe it. Okay. Does so Sweden live down here in Florida? Yeah, real far. Real far? Yeah. Okay. In America, though. Uh, in America? Yeah. Okay. So then you, you hung up the phone? I with... said goodbye. Okay. And then what did you do? I was going to show myself that I said it. I didn't want to do that. And I called 911. Okay. And what did you tell 911? Okay. And they kept you on the phone? Yes. Until the cops came. Until the cops came. Were you wearing the same clothes you're wearing now? Yeah. Uh, there's some red stains there. Is that blood? I think it is. Okay. I have a little bit of blood on my hands. On your hands too? Yes. Okay. Did you ever make your way to your sister? Killing her? N- no. Touching her? Touching her? No. No? I left her alone. She was sleeping and she didn't wake up so I didn't touch her. Okay. Alright. Uh, let's get back to your mom. Okay, you said she was sleeping. Yes. Okay. Where exactly did you cut her? Okay. And and um, you purposely went for the artery? When you mm-hmm. cut her? Okay. Was there a lot of blood after? Okay. Um, did you tell her anything before you stabbed her? Did you say anything? But she didn't wake up when you, she was asleep, in, she was asleep when you stabbed her. What curse words did you say? And then she woke up? Yes. Did you say anything else to her? Did she say anything to you or no? No, she just screamed. She just screamed? Yes. Okay. Why did you stab your mom? Can you go to the bathroom before I answer that? Yes, of course. So you were about to tell me the why. Why did you uh, kill your mother? Do you know? Do I have to say it now? Yeah, get it off your chest. Absolutely. You can wait for a lawyer. Okay, at this point you want a lawyer? Mm, maybe not. We, we can't. No, listen, listen. Just so you understand, okay? You have mentioned or asked us should you wait for a lawyer. We're not here to advise you on whether 
to talk to a lawyer or not, that decision mm -hmm. is yours, okay? But if you are requesting a lawyer at this point, we can't interview you any further. You understand? We have to stop the interview. Okay. Do you want us to stop the interview? Yes. Okay. Okay. And then this interview will end right now. Of course, even after hearing that confession, police still needed to conduct a thorough investigation. They found that Irina actually had a baby cam in their room, and that baby cam captured the footage of a violent, brutal attack. On that footage, at 10.23 p.m., we see Irina in her bed cradling her two-week-old baby girl. She falls asleep, and she puts Irina back in the crib, which is located right next to her bed. By 11 p.m., investigators found actual footage of what they described as a brutal, frenzied attack carried out by Derek on his mother, where again, he stabbed her over 46 times. That is just an insane amount of times to stab your own mother. Of course, they have not released a full video of the attack, and even if they did, I wouldn't play it anyways but they did release this still image of Derek standing over his mother's body while she lay in bed as he stabs her to death. It is such an eerie and disturbing image, especially knowing that the little baby girl is right there. Based on that footage, investigators believe that the baby was asleep for the entire attack. Thank God. After hearing his confession and seeing the evidence that we have up to this point, Initially, Derek was charged with second-degree murder. At that time, he was held at a Miami-Dade juvenile detention center. However, after looking through his internet activity, police found some extremely disturbing internet searches. They found searches for what is the best place to stab someone? Is a small knife good for killing? Is it easier to kill someone with a small knife? And can a knife cut through bone? Because of this, of course, police felt that this absolutely was a premeditated murder. So they upped his charges to first degree murder and transferred him to a juvenile wing at an adult prison. In the state of Florida, first-degree murder is automatically placed into the adult felony court system. While he will not face the death penalty, though it is legal in Florida, he very well could be sentenced to life behind bars. At his initial hearing, his family submitted a not guilty plea on his behalf. At his bail hearing, family members of Derek's showed up in droves. His father, Jose Rosa, said that he had sent over 20 letters to the court which described Derek as a good, respectful kid who is on the honor roll in eighth grade. They said that Derek was beloved by his mother and his friends, and his family still love and support him. Jose himself had spent 22 years in the military prior to this, and he said that he instilled good moral values in his son. Derek's family asked that he be allowed to await his trial at home. His father said, quote, it's hard for us to explain how this occurred. I guess what we're asking for is another opportunity, a second chance to help him grow and become mature as a grown man, to put this behind him and say, we have your back, we're here to support you. It's hard to take back what already occurred, so we can only move forward and try to give him more support and let him know that we love him. He said that this incident was very out of character for his son. He continued, quote, it's very unfortunate that this tragedy occurred, but this child is still very humble, very peaceful, and no one could imagine that this would ever happen. Another family member described Derek as affectionate and loving. They said, quote, This is not like Derek. No one knows Derek like we know him. And this is not Derek, so you know. Two weeks after Irina Garcia was stabbed to death, her mom standing by the accused killer, her grandson, Derek Rosa. It's very unfortunate that this tragedy occurred, but this child is very humble, very peaceful, and nobody could imagine that this would ever happen. Garcia's mom and Derek's father begged a bond court judge to let the now adult defendant go home under house arrest. It's hard for us to explain how this occurred. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult, but I guess what we're asking for is another opportunity, it's a second chance to help him grow and become mature as a grown man to, to put this behind him and say, we have your back. We're here to support you. 
Rosa described an over 20 letters sent to the court as an honor roll student, respectful and someone still loved by family on both sides. Someone who has never had any sort of violent tendencies or behavioral issues and goes out of his way to help others. But police describe Rosa as the teen who stabbed his mom next to his newborn baby sister's crib. The baby not hurt, but mom found unresponsive. In court, Rosa's dad in disbelief. He also mentioned how his ex-wife was feeling before her death. Derek's mother recently had a child, and she was overwhelmed with a lot of the work. It's, it's not taking away anything from what occurred. Um, and I wish if we could bring, you know, the incident back to yesterday or the day before that occurred. The plea of not guilty will be entered in demand for discovery. This coming days after his case was transferred out of the juvenile court system. The grand jury brought back as an indictment for Derek Rosa charging him with first degree premeditated murder. A decision family members vehemently disagree with. No es adulto nada, es un niño que juega todavía. Vamos. At his bond hearing, loved ones, including his father and maternal grandmother, came to advocate for him. They came prepared today to do the same, as his attorney filed a motion to keep him housed at a juvenile facility. Derek es un nene bueno, cariñoso, amoroso. Esto no es como Derek. Nadie conoce a Derek como lo conocemos no nosotros, y esto no es Derek. However, ultimately, he was denied bail. They also asked that Derek be transferred to a juvenile facility, saying that the juvenile wing in the adult facility is not equipped to handle children. They said that he's not given meals until 1 or 2 in the morning. They said that he can't even wear his glasses unless he directly requests them and that he's not on any specific educational class schedule. A family member told the courts that it is very important that he goes to class. He's a 13-year-old boy. He needs to be getting some sort of education and he needs to be treated like a child, not an adult. He is also the youngest of all the 34 juveniles being held in the juvenile wing in the adult prison. So beyond him not being treated properly in the adult jail, they argued that because he's just a 13-year-old boy, that he shouldn't even be considered an adult in the justice system. Derek's attorneys agree and are also fighting for him to be transferred to a juvenile facility. At this time, through all of the hearings that Derek has been through up to this point, it's been said that he's shown no emotion and has remained oddly calm throughout the entire process, though family members claim that he has become emotional at some points. The chilling interrogation video played in court. 13-year-old Derek Rosa allegedly confessing to brutally stabbing his mother, Irina Garcia, to death and that he considered killing himself afterwards but changed his mind. Family members in the gallery are sobbing. Yes, on October 12 at 6 p.m., he did make searches on Google. Okay. He typed in the word, the carotid artery image diagram. What is the best place to stab someone? Is a small knife good for killing? This hearing is to determine whether Rosa should be held in a juvenile-only facility as he awaits trial. A corrections corporal testified that because Rosa is a high-profile inmate, he's kept alone in his cell and supervised 24 hours a day. A psychologist says the teen has ADHD and that another doctor tested him on the autism spectrum and that Rosa was suicidal when he was first brought in. He has not explained why he did what he did and neither have his attorneys. They also have not argued about anything with mental health or anything like that up to this point. As of right now, Derek remains in the adult prison and is being charged with first degree murder as an adult. If convicted, he could be facing up to life in prison. So that is all of the information that we have up to this point. For me, this is a very, very tough case. Obviously, Derek is still a child. He's only 13 years old. And when children commit crimes like this, it's natural to almost feel bad for what he's now going through. This is definitely going to be a controversial conversation, so feel free to sound off with your opinions in the comments. But some people strongly believe that children should never be sentenced to life no matter what crime they commit. Some people believe, on the other hand, that if you commit an adult act, then you deserve to be treated as an adult. And I, for one, 
I'm somewhere in the middle. I think that each case should be looked at differently and that all the factors at play in each individual case should determine whether a child is charged as an adult. Again, this case is hard because Derek isn't even in high school yet. That is how young he is. But at the same time, the level of violence that he was able to enact on his own mother, that is terrifying. Anybody capable of stabbing someone that many times has something seriously wrong with them, and I don't think that they are someone who can be trusted to be out in society. So as of right now, I think with this case in particular, we need to consider the safety of Derek's friends, family, loved ones, his community, and society as a whole, rather than thinking only about what a 13-year-old deserves. Because I think that Derek is a danger to everybody around him and will continue to be, possibly for the rest of his life. So again, as of right now, I do agree that Derek should be charged as an adult because if he were charged as a juvenile, there is a chance of him being released at 18 years old, and I just don't think that's safe for anybody, including those around Derek. It most likely wouldn't happen given the severity of the case, but I don't even want that to be up for debate. I do hope that Derek receives a lifelong amount of therapy. He obviously really needs it. Again, his attorneys have not brought up anything in relation to mental health, but I've said it once and I'll say it again. Anybody who commits this type of crime, especially with this level of brutality, especially against his own mother, that is somebody that has something severely wrong with them. I am also looking forward to finding out more. I want to know why this happened. What are his lawyers going to argue? Are they going to claim mental illness? If so, why haven't they said anything about that yet? If they don't claim mental illness, what else could they possibly argue to defend him in this? Was his mother abusive? I haven't seen anything about that either, and of course, I'm not going to make any baseless accusations against anybody. For now, I will say that we don't know nearly enough to even question if she was abusive. I don't think she was, and based on what other people have said about her, doesn't seem like she was in the slightest but there does have to be something that explains why he did this. So, as soon as we find out more, especially if more comes out at the trial, I will share any and all updates with you all. But for now, that is where I'm going to end today's video, and now I want to hear what you guys think. What do you think led Derek to killing his mother? What do you think about his actions after? Do you agree with him being charged as an adult? What do you think of his family asking for a second chance? Sound off with anything that you have to say in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!